Hello, everybody. Hello. Orla, you can say hi. Hello. Hello. Today we're going to read a story written by Cheryl De Vega and illustrated by Luis Perez. It's called The Prickly Problem. What? Wow. That cactus is really prickly. Mm -hmm. What is that? A monkey? Maybe like that's the sign says Dr. Pete the porcupine. Oh, it's a porcupine. The porcu porcupines also have ah, spikes. spikes, right? But not as prickly as a cactus. That cactus is way too prickly. All right. Dr. Pete the porcupine was no ordinary doctor. He was able to mix magic potions and use them to solve prickly problems. And in the hot, dry desert where he lived, his neighbors had plenty of prickly problems. Dr. Pete was able to solve every one of them until one strange day. It began as a typical Monday. Dr. Pete pulled on his puffy coat so he wouldn't poke his patients. He opened his office door and smiled at the long line of neighbors who greeted him. Who's first? Dr. Pete asked cheerfully. Jake the snake raised his tail. Dr. Pete, my rattler is not rattling, Jake groaned. Ah, said Dr. Pete as he boiled up some tall tail snake oil and carefully dipped Jake's tail into the soothing potion. That should do it. Dr. Pete gave Jake a hug. Thanks, Dr. Pete, Jake cried as he slithered away, his tail rattling louder than ever. Prickly problem solved. Who's next? asked Dr. Pete. Sting the scorpion stated that his stinger stung. Dr. Pete whipped up a batch of rash bash butter rubbed it on Sting Stinger and gave him a hug. Wow, exclaimed Sting. That butter made it better. Prickly problem solved. And so the day went on. Dr. Pete smeared flim flam jam on Rhoda the Roadrunner's sore ankle and gave her a hug. Prickly problem solved. Liz the Lizard's dry skin was treated with lizard lotion and a cuddle. Prickly problem solved. At the end of the long day, Dr. Pete hung up his puffy coat and walked out of his office. He was surprised to see his patients waiting for him outside. Dr. Pete, said Jake, we need your help. We have a prickly problem we can't solve without you. Oh, guys, Dr. Pete said, I'm so tired. What is it? It's Cactus Jack. Liz cried. He's just so nasty. Yeah, he's mean, Rhoda agreed. Very mean, rattled Jake. Here's the thing, explained Sting. No one can pass him without hearing an insult. He makes us feel awful. And we have to go past him to get to you, Dr. Pete, Liz added. You can solve everything with your potions. Please help us. Dr. Pete hesitated. He knew Cactus Jack was a rude dude, and this would be a hard case to crack. Okay, okay, Dr. Pete finally said. I'll go take a look. The gang followed Dr. Pete out to the dry patch of desert where Jack lived. Jack saw them coming. Well, look who's here, he scoffed. My prickly problem doesn't need solving. Sorry, doctor. But I don't believe in your silly potions. Oh dear, this is a prickly problem indeed, proclaimed Dr. Pete as he examined Jack's skin. Mm, needless to say, at least your needles are nice and sharp. Dr. Pete mixed up some grouch be gone potion. Liz crept up and poured the potion into Jack's mouth. Nope, Jack let out a belch. Not working, Dr. Porky Spike, he spat. Dr. Pete mixed up some cranky cure. Then he applied no more mean cream. Nothing helped. Sorry, guys, there's nothing more I can do here, Dr. Pete said, packing up his bag. As Dr. Pete turned to leave, 
he felt a drop of rain on his back. But wait, there wasn't a cloud in the blue desert sky. Dr. Pete shined a light up at Jack's eyes. Jack, he asked gently, are you crying? Nonsense, Jack replied. Cacti don't cry. But seeing the tears gave Dr. Pete one last idea. I need to examine Jack's heart, he said to the gang. We can help, cried Liz. Rhoda ran like lightning and returned with Dr. Pete's puffy coat. Liz and Sting crawled up between the cactus needles, dragging Dr. Pete's medical bag. Hop on my back, Jake cried as he coiled his body and lifted Dr. Pete up. Grab onto Jack's needles, Dr. Pete climbed up, 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 all the way to Jack's heart. But as Dr. Pete reached up to rub some heart hurt healing jelly on Jack's heart, he slipped. Dr. Pete threw his arms around Jack, trying to hang on. He hugged Jack with all his might. He hugged so tight that Jack's spiky needles poked through his puffy coat. Ouch! But Dr. Pete didn't let go. And then something magical happened. Jack smiled and said softly, Oh, Dr. Pete, I feel so much better. Thank you, my friend. Jack gazed down at his desert neighbors. I'm sorry for calling you names and hurting your feelings. I guess it was just that I was lonely. My heart was hurting, and I took it out on you. The neighbors rallied around Jack for a group hug. Ouch! Eek! Ouch! It must have been the magic potions, cried Sting. Of course it was, the others chimed in. But deep in Jack's heart, he knew the truth. The magic wasn't in the potions. The magic was always in the hugs. Fun facts about porcupines. A group of porcupines is called a prickle. Seriously, maybe that's why Dr. Pete is good at solving prickly problems. <laughs> Porcupines have thousands of sharp quills on their backs for protection. That's why Dr. Pete had to wear his puffy coat to protect his friends. Porcupines like to come out at night, but Dr. Pete liked the daytime as well. Baby porcupines are called porcupets. <laughs> that's they, funny. That's cute. They are born with soft quills, but it only takes a few days for them to sharpen up. Be careful petting a porcupet. So if you were out at night, a prickle of porcupets could poke you as they pass by. No, that would be a prickly problem. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this Biff Bambooza book. Go to BiffBambooza.com where you can sing along to the Dr. Pete Cactus Jack song, find other Biff Bambooza books and sing-along videos, and join the Biff Bambooza Kids Club and get lots of goodies. <laughs> Thanks for listening. That's a good book. And goodbye. Goodbye.